Hey guys, if you're new here, I'm Anna, and I somehow scored a 1600 on my SAT a few months back. I'm making this video series to just share all my tips with the world and help people out. In this video, I'll be covering the reading section, but I also have videos on the math, writing, and essay sections. So let's just get into it. The reading section was by far the most challenging section for me, and in all my practice tests, I don't think I ever aced it, but I somehow got really lucky on test day. I used to think it was so subjective and ridiculous, but that's only partially true. The thing is, College Board has to make it standardized so that someone who doesn't have any background knowledge on the passages can still get the right answer. This means that everything you need will be in the passages, so don't infer anything. This can be really hard, and I'll get into the specifics of how inferring things can backfire, but that's the biggest tip, so keep this in mind when you're watching the rest of this video and taking your own test. So for my main strategy, I usually start off skimming the questions before each passage really quick just to see if there were any summary questions or overarching themes that I need to be looking out for. And I went ahead and underlined all the vocab and sometimes answered those before even reading the whole thing to boost my confidence a little bit. Then definitely don't skip reading the little intro they give here. This can be really important in providing context, and usually with the science passages or the two that debate each other, it could even occasionally help you answer some of the summary questions without even reading the passage. For example, this question asks, what's the purpose of this passage? Looking at the title, why birds fly in a V formation, that's like verbatim one of our answer choices, so it's very likely to be that one. Obviously, you still need to read it afterwards to confirm this, but it helps you get in the right framework of what you're supposed to be getting out of the passage. Otherwise, if you're like me, you'll end up reading the whole thing but not absorbing any of it. And it's a bonus if you recognize the author or authors and already know a little bit about them. Take the two debating passages. And I swear when I say half the time these are about women's suffrage, I'm not even exaggerating. So we can see that these passages are pretty old, and passage one was written by a man, passage two was written by a woman. They also give us a little tidbit about how this is gonna be probably a debate on equality for women here. So we can't outright assume anything here because of this, but without reading the paragraphs, I at least expect passage two to vouch a little bit more for women's equality than passage one. This expectation, along with reading some of the questions ahead of time, makes it a bit easier to slog through all the fancy old language, and it saves time. Now, my vocabulary in the real world is not very great, despite my weird obsession with reading the dictionary in fifth grade. But the good news is, the SAT vocab is mostly limited to easier words put into harder contexts. Start by underlining the vocab term that the question wants to replace. Then read the sentence as it is, and maybe a few sentences before and after it for context as well. After you come up with your own idea of what it's supposed to mean, plug in each answer choice into the full sentence and read it in your head. Most of the choices should feel kinda clumsy even without more context, even if they all look similar on their own, so you can immediately cross those off. Here's an example. Even though I honestly probably couldn't give you a definition of dominion out of context of this paragraph, I have a general idea of what it's supposed to mean here because of the surrounding sentence. Mankind have outgrown the state, and all things now tend to substitute as the general principle of human relations a just equality instead of dominion of the strongest. So mankind is substituting equality for this overwhelming power that the strongest had before. If we go to our answer choices and do a quick plug-in, ownership of the strongest or territory of the strongest sound like they're controlling the strongest instead of having the strongest doing the controlling, or that the strongest have some kind of physical land instead of just the hypothetical power. Omnipotence I know I've heard in a more religious sense, and it might suggest something too powerful than what's here. Supremacy of the strongest is the way to go. It sounds the least bad when it's plugged in. Occasionally, if it's a trickier vocab question, you'll have to read the whole passage and keep in mind exactly what each one is suggesting compared to what the paragraph was suggesting before, because sometimes the correct answer is something that you would never think the word would mean in an out-of-context situation. Okay, now here's my favorite technique ever, and yes, I did steal this from Prep Scholar but it's really good, okay? I used to die a bit inside every time I saw the two-part questions where you'd have to provide evidence for your answer, but once I started doing this, I would be so relieved because it makes them even easier than the normal summary ones. Here's what you do. Circle each of the quotes in the passage for each of the questions like this. You can differentiate the quotes of different questions by drawing little symbols on the ones that go together for the same questions so you don't get confused later. This can be a cathartic process to do in the beginning before you read a passage, or you can spend the time doing it whenever you need a little brain break. 
Next, read the question to the first part, but not the answer choices. Now read your circled sentences one after the other and notice which ones don't seem to answer that at all. Make sure every part of the original question is addressed in whatever quote you choose. Now once you feel like you already know the correct answer from this, predict what the answer to the first question will be. If these match up, it's a good chance you got both of them right. Let's walk through an example to see how this works. This one asks what this dude's attitude is towards today's digital technologies. So we're looking for both some opinion from Kat, this dude, and it has to be about current technology. Now we look at each of the quotes. This one is just describing how he's done some research and stuff, and it also talks about 19th century technology, so that's a nope. This says we'll never run out of jobs, even though it may take time to develop the expertise for them as they change. This is a little more on the mark, but it still doesn't really state anything about new technology directly, so it's probably not that one. Next, he says, people always come up with new things to do. That also doesn't address new technology when you look at it out of context. It's a bit too general. In the last one, he says, if technology disrupts enough, who knows what will happen? This is the only one that directly answers the first question by mentioning today's technology in it. Now to double check, we make sure that one of the answer choices of the first question goes along with this. They say he's alarmed, unconcerned, uncertain, or optimistic. And we know he's uncertain from the quote we selected. See how easy it could have been to fall in the trap of selecting the 19th century one though, since the quote also said that, even though it completely didn't address the question? I love doing them this way since it guarantees you're not assuming anything, and makes the first part so much easier than it normally is, and then you can also have that check at the end since both the questions need to match. Note that sometimes the test will bypass the first question completely and just combine them into one where you pick the right quote, but this strategy works there too. The last thing is a quick word bank of terms. You need to know what all these mean before you go into the test. You might laugh at me, but I kid you not, on the September SAT, the one I got a 1600 on, I spent like 10 minutes trying to remember if to underscore meant to emphasize something or to undermine it, and a lot of eraser marks and stress later, I got the right answer, kind of just because I knew the format of the test so well. But imagine how tragic that would have been if that was the one question I got wrong just because of my crappy vocabulary. Okay, so those are my main tricks, but now I want to talk about the details of each section and how to improve. The first passage is going to be some fictional narrative type passage, and that's a really fun way to start off if you like that kind of stuff. I recommend, after doing the skim through of the questions and underlining the vocab and quotes, that you try to absorb yourself in the story as much as possible. Try to get invested in the characters with the short little glimpse you get of them. Besides the vocab and the two-part questions, which we already talked about, these will ask you stuff like plot points, why a character acted the way they did, why the author did certain things or included certain devices, or just about general summary and themes. This may seem subjective, but remember that all the answers have to be stated in the text since this is a standardized test. If your school offers an AP Lang or AP Lit class, I recommend taking that since it'll decrease the amount of time it takes you to comprehend these. Alternatively, just have fun reading content that challenges you. In the months before taking the SAT, I struggled through To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf in my Lit class, and the Odyssey in my humanities class, and my brain hurt every second I was reading those, but those struggles made going back to the SAT section seem like child's play. There will also definitely be a pair of passages, usually with opposing viewpoints about some science topic or two old dudes talking about the constitution or something. For these, I recommend skimming the questions first, like always, and then looking for all the passage one specific questions and giving those extra consideration before you read passage one. Then stop after you read the first passage and answer all those first while it's still fresh in your mind. Then repeat with the second passage and the questions specific to that passage. After you read both and have gotten the themes of each one confirmed in your mind by having to answer the questions specific to both of those, then you finally do the questions that reference both of them. They'll usually ask things like, hypothetically, if this person heard what this person had to say, what would they say about that? Or like, where's the common ground here between these people? Oh, or also it'll just ask the relationship between the two passages, and more often than not, they'll have some sort of opposing viewpoint, or they'll call something the other mentions into question, which is why I like calling it the debate section. Okay, so the rest of the passages are split between history, social science, and science. 
Honestly, I think the history ones are pretty generic and I don't have much specific advice for them, except that they'll probably be a bit harder to get through because of the absolutely ancient sounding language, which again, reading more difficult books can help you with. Social science ones focus mostly on things like economics and psychology, and those are pretty fun since there's usually not too much jargon. They'll also have some nice graphs included with them, and those questions usually require you to have both an understanding of what the theme is of the passage, and then connect it to the graph somehow. Be careful and double check your work when it comes to these graphs, because misreading what a question is asking for or not reading the right bar on the graph or something would be a really sad way to lose points. To get better at analyzing graphs, taking AP science classes can help, or just working with Khan Academy, honestly. Now, I love science, but I found myself struggling with the science passages because I was applying my own background information to the passage and trying to answer the questions that way. I'm gonna say it again because it's important, don't infer anything! It's actually really challenging to prevent yourself from doing this a lot of the time, but it pays off. Always read all the answer choices before you select one. That goes for everything, but it's especially important here. And the same thing with the graphs applies to this section too. The last tip is a general one, but wait until the end to bubble all of your answers in, because otherwise you're not going to be able to get absorbed into the passages by switching back and forth. You do have to make sure you have enough time at the end to do this, so maybe leave yourself five minutes no matter where you are in the section to just go and bubble as fast as you can, and then come back to the ones you're still struggling with. Wow, okay, I think that's all my main tips I have for this section. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below, and please post any of your own tips to help everyone out too. I hope this helped, and I'll see you soon. Bye!